and welcome to another edition of Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business. Coach James Short here, aka Shorty, and welcome to another episode. Today, I'm very excited because we've got someone a little bit different, and I'll share with you who that is shortly. So remember, if uh, you're watching this, listening to this uh, in the car, in the office, or at home, make sure you press the subscribe either on Facebook, uh, what else? We've got Spotify, iTunes, Press the subscribe so you get the next episode straight into your inbox. So who do we have today? Oh, I'm excited. Here we go. We have Julian Kusiaga. He's co-founder of Sydney-based buyers agency Search Party Property, which focuses on data-led, tailored property investment strategies across Australia. This is going to be exciting. He also owns a property management business in Brisbane, Redefined Property, where he saw opportunity to vertically integrate a reoccurring revenue stream business to extend the customer journey for his investors. Oh, I'm excited to get Julian on this show. Julian is also a Property Investment Professionals of Australia, PIPA member, um, and he's worked 20 years as a senior executive in the customer experience and loyalty marketing sector across Europe and Asia Pacific. He also took on an expat, expatriate assignment to India with his young family to launch India's first premium loyalty coalition program. Later, it was sold to MasterCard Global. Well, there's a journey there. His passion for customer service and data analytics created the perfect storm for him to enter this passion and to open up doors across property investors across Australia. I am excited to get him on the show today. Mate, Julian, Thank you so, so much for, for joining us today and um, and welcome. Yeah, thanks, James. Quite an introduction. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, so, so customer loyalty programs, what a history in, you know, doing what you were doing previously. What what sparked the journey of real estate for you? Um, I guess it goes back to, you know, education as a younger person. Um, wasn't something we talked about definitely at the dinner table, you know, migrant family, uh, parents working two jobs because their education um, wasn't recognised when they migrated to Australia. So, yeah, it wasn't, it was always the whole, um, you know, buy a house, pay it off, buy a house, pay it off is what my parents did and no credit cards, no no debt. Um, so it was definitely not something around the, the dinner table, but I guess as you get a bit older, you're listening, you're learning, you know, you start listening to back in the day, I'm that old, you know, cassettes and CDs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, got you. I, was into, I was a sales guy. So you sort of spent a lot of time traveling and um, so I listened to a lot of those things. And then obviously, you know, the Robert Kawasaki book, mm. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was probably a, a clinch moment for me. And I know most people I speak to, it's always that about how to, you know, compound growth and assets and collection and um, so, yeah, that was probably something. And then, you know, talked to a few friends, did a bit of research and um, got into, got my first property. And uh, I guess from there, then we got married and, you know, my wife and I also went on that journey and started building a portfolio. So then it became a bit of a passion, a bit of, an, you know, something I really ob uh, absorbed myself in. Uh, those days, there wasn't, the you know, the internet and um, wasn't as um, available as it is today with the information that we get, the educators on, on YouTube and all these channels that we can get so much free um, information. So, you know, read the books, went to the seminars. I guess the seminars back in those days are a bit more Spruker-led yeah. seminars, <laughs> <laughs> you know, run to the back of the room type of thing. Um, yeah. like, but it was a good learning curve. You learned about sales, you learned about presentation, you learned about, you know, I come from that marketing and sales background. So it was good to just see how people present things. Um, always take something positive out of out of those sessions. And um, yeah, then so sure be it. Uh, you know, corporate world doing really well and all that, but always had that that gut burn in the stomach um, about doing my own thing one day. And, uh, and here I am. Wow. And so what, why, I mean, cause you could have taken so many different pathways, right? Why, why did you go down the pathway of um, buyer's agent? What's what, what was the reasoning behind that? Yeah. Um, probably first thing was I used a buyer's agent to help us build, you know, what seven or eight properties we use the buyer's agent to buy those properties. So I think also from a corporate background, you know, we, did consulting to banks, telcos, the biggest companies. And so outsourcing what my what I was an expert at made sense to me because that's what I did in my corporate life. So, yeah, I guess it made sense to use an expert in a certain field like I would a tax agent or an, you know, an accountant or a lawyer or a solicitor. Um, made sense to me from a property perspective to use an expert to help me on the way. 
I love that because it's so true. So often we, we, we try to wear all the different hats, but then when, you know, it's, it's like, you don't take your car to the dentist to get fixed. Right. <laughs> so I love that piece. That's so good. And, and so I want to unpack something for a sec, like going from corporate into real estate. I love talking to people who've, who've made that transition because they will bring a lot of um, different perspective to the industry. What have you noticed when you've come from, from corporate into, into property, what have you noticed is the the biggest gaps and the biggest, I guess, uh, opportunities, I, I guess, at the same time? Um, yeah, it's a good question. In terms of gaps, um, you know, I guess the corporate world, there is a, probably a higher bar of entry in, in certain levels because if you've got to specialise in something, you're probably going to have um, some education in that, so be it a degree or a qualification to, to, to move into that area. Um, obviously, you can't be an accountant without – you know, having an accounting degree and yeah. things like that. So that's probably one thing. Um, probably the compliance and the regulatory bodies aren't as strong in our industry. Um, I mean, the real estate industry is quite strong, but we keep hearing of all these challenges in, in the real estate selling, let's say, talk at the, call it the selling sector. Um, but then you go on the other side of the, of the ledger, which is where I'm in, is the buying sector. And that's a relatively new um, business model. I mean, you know, there have been some great buyers agents who are still around now over over 10 or 15 years old. And then there's been a huge surge of buyers agents, um, particularly in the last since COVID, um, you know, coming in and a lot of them are doing it part-time, side hustle. That's kind of the marketing angle used at it. And as we know, um, you know, if you put a part-time effort into something, you get a part-time result. Yeah, of course, of course. And so, so looking at that now, looking at where where are you seeing the the the, the market? Where are you seeing the industry with with your lens that you're that that you're seeing seeing it through at the moment? Um, I guess from an industry perspective, it's, sorry, so talking about a marketing a market side or just the. Yeah, the market, the market. The market, yeah. I guess as we've gone through, again, if we go back to, we talked about COVID earlier, you know, we've gone through that COVID, uh, COVID um, time and come out of the back of that, a lot of that doom and gloom was around the market. And then we actually were able to um, to, t- to see that the market um, increase quite dramatically um, coming out of the back of COVID. And we had 2021 where the market went through the roof, you know, over 30%. We talked about making a lot of people moving into diff- making lifestyle cha- choices and changes. 70,000 people, I think, left Melbourne in one year just wow. to get into that at Queensland market and we saw the boom in Brisbane, Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast happen purely on the back of that um, because, there, as we know, there weren't any migrants coming to the country. Yep. It was a purely a domestic migration. So we – and then, you know, then we had the 10, 10 months back-to-back-to-back to back to back of interest rate hikes and uh, that really put the, the, the market on pause. There was a real fear in the market. Uh, we saw our business dramatically um, – reduce in that time you know we still had a lot of conversations luckily we bought hundreds of properties over that period um so a lot of clients were repeat purchasing if they had equity um a lot of the sm- once that sort of first few maybe four or five months went past then uh clients with equity understood that the market's pretty you know at a, at a declining stage not a bad time to get in everyone wants to pick the bottom of the market but no one can do that yeah. so you know the ones who took that took that plunge to get into the market and keep buying during that downturn have now come up we've seen that hockey stick move back up the market and uh yeah certainly very positive we've just actually james had the biggest month uh, in august uh that we've ever had in, in the company's history so yeah we're very buoyant to see the confidence is back three three months of paused interest rate increases um and on top of that th- four months of uh increase in, in property housing prices in in the key capital cities so that's a, probably a good formula for our investors to be confident to get back in the market and and that's what i love around what you guys do because you've got a, a national perspective around it and you can see the different trends in, in the different major cities. Um, you know, when one, one major city is, is on an uptrend, the other major city might be on a, a bit of a downtrend, but what you've got, you've got that perspective across the whole nation, which is, which is fantastic. And to have, you know, that's a testament of, of you guys to have your biggest month in, in August. That's, that's absolutely phenomenal. Well done. So what are you noticing? Obviously you're talking to a lot of, um, 
you know, agents out there when you're do, dealing with your, your your businesses and, and dealing deals out there. What are you noticing is the biggest, I guess, fears and frustrations out there in the industry at the moment? Um, from an industry perspective, I guess, uh, I don't know if I hear a lot of fears. I think maybe I surround myself with positive people. <laughs> it probably <laughs> keeps you away from that. Uh, you know, I think we've gone through that fearful stage. We've all um, seen that that uh, downturn through 20, financial year 2022. So I think it's a real optimistic um, view is what I'm seeing in the buy. Let's talk about the buyer's agency space, the buyer's yeah. agency I speak to and surround myself with, even just industry experts. Obviously, there's a team around that, right? So we have financial planners, we have mortgage brokers, we have accountants, we have um solicitors, conveyances, uh, depreciation, uh, quality, quantity surveyors, you know, they're all part of our team and part of our group. So I often will ask them, what are they seeing in the market? I often found when I, when I hear our mortgage broke partners um, are getting busy, that's a good sign for us. Yes. Because if people are coming in for finance, that says, well, they're getting ready for finance, which means they're going to look to invest, you know, a small portion of that um, clientele will look to invest in property as well. I love it. So, so you, you talk about the hockey stick approach. Where do you think where the industry is at at the moment in relation to your growth? And what do you see the, I guess, the next six, 12, 24 months uh, coming up? Yeah, I mean, there's probably the generic view. And then there's, yep. you know, you've got to fine tune that to every city and every state is very different. Um, so, generic view is, you know, where, you know, summer's kicked in, the spring's on, this is a buying activity. Yeah? People are out there, the grass is looking greener, and uh, uh, the we see more stock on market. So, that's an exciting time in the real estate game. Um, and I feel just with what's what I just mentioned previously about those market dynamics, we're going to see, um, you know, the market continue to be strong. Now, is it going to keep going up, Brisbane went up over 1% in the last last month. Is that going to happen every month? Well, if that did, that means we're going to have a, a year of maybe 15 or 18% increase in Brisbane alone. Um, are we going to see that? I, I doubt that sort of levels. Uh, but I think we'll see this uh, gradual um, positivity through the market. You know, you've always got December and January, which, you know, we tend to switch off a little bit in, in Australia, as we know, through our summer holidays. Okay. So that, that generally does have a little bit of a a lag in, in the in the in the growth, and then February everyone's back on deck, and we see that uh, that that surge again through February March, um, and just getting into April is what we've seen over years and years of running this business. You know, January and February is actually our busy, one, couple of our busiest months. Wow, that's for cool. new for new clients coming into the business, and the reason is they're all sitting at sitting at home or on holidays, dreaming about the year coming up. They're on their phone, they're listening to all this uh, noise about property market. It's everyone's favorite topic at a barbecue, and we just find the phone rings fourth of January and we open, and everyone's back on. So, so that's good. a good time for us to be present. Uh, we don't take holidays over that period. We actually try to be, you know, some of us on a short, short staffing roster because um, we just found two years in a row that's been our busiest month. That's fantastic. And yeah, the, you're right. Like everyone's like, oh, okay, what are the goals for the year and how are we going to in- increase our, you know, property portfolio this year? So that's great that you're getting that that influx in that January, February. And it is right. Like come sort of the, the third week of January, the, you know, the, everyone else sort of starts kicking in, rolling in and, and you see the, the, um, the changes within the, the market out there as well. So what's, what's exciting for you? What, what, what are you guys coming up at uh, search Par- party property? What are you guys working on? Any exciting projects that you, you're working on at the moment? Yeah, I guess there's a, you know, you talked about the vertical integration of the property management business, and that's gone really far for us. And that's great. Part of it's obviously we're feeding ourselves because our clients had such a good journey with us in the buying process um, that it, it, it just makes sense to obviously, yeah, you guys are great at what you do. Please manage our, our portfolio as well. Um, and then, you know, I'll probably keep focusing on that, getting that right team elements and structures in, in, in Brisbane. And obviously, once you in property management, once you get to a certain level of, um, of properties on your book, you need to maybe look at um, additional staff. So just fine-tuning that will be something I'll be focusing on, particularly in the new year. Um, other aspects that excite me is just looking at, at the business and uh, maybe other other verticals that we wanted to go into. So, you know, mortgage broker is an obvious one, but it's not, it's too regulated, very hard to get into. It's probably not something we want to go down right now anyway. So we've got great partners and we're happy to work with them. We're seeing, I'm getting approached by a lot of buyers agents who are entering the market. Um, and so I've put together a few formulas around potentially working under our brand. So almost, not, I'm not talking a franchise model, but they want to they suck up our expertise, our knowledge of data. A lot of people have passion for buying property, but they don't want to spend hours on writing a due diligence document. 
which is what takes us to, that long to write. We've also got scale. We've got teams. We've have processes in place. Everything CRM, everything document, everything scripted to the to the last letter. And so that's something I think I'm going to tease that model out of. Just it's all happened in the last couple of months. People approaching me about that. Um, so there's a little bit of guidance and mentorship in the early stage with these people, and now it's sort of talking about okay well maybe this model could be work could work for us it's something we've always had on the you know on the board on the annual um strategy sessions that we put on but it's always been put on that back burner so maybe it's time to maybe spend a little bit of quiet time me to designing that concept i love that because it, it what i'm hearing you're very much of a attraction based business where where you do such a good job and people who enter the industry hear about you so they go oh you know let let's let's come under your banner, whatever that looks like, because of your expertise, your IP, your knowledge and and your professionalism. So fantastic. So Julian, we we, we do a little of, uh, bit of a, a fun thing on the show, which is a, a 60 second quick quiz, a bit more about you personally. Um, so a bunch of, bunch of questions we're going to go through. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> oh, let's go. All right, here we go. Favorite movie? Uh, a bit of fun. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, favorite food? Um, I love laksa, especially in the winter. Ooh, yeah. Oh yeah. What? What do? You, is there a particular type of meat in your laksa, or just everything? I like prawns. Ooh, ooh, um, nice. and I like tofu. So. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. All right. What's uh your favorite holiday destination? I'd say Nepal. Oh, okay. Cool. Do you have a morning routine? Yeah, pretty set. I uh, sort of get up about five thirty, straight away. Need a, need a coffee, so get a you know get a piccolo started um normally just drink that coffee at home just do a bit of breathing a bit of uh just thinking about the day ahead not looking at my phone if i can help it um then go to the gym do that get home and then it's you know shower get ready bit of bit of our school school drop-offs and uh, normally entailed in there and then get on the desk and um start the day around about eight o'clock fantastic and what about uh evening ritual do you have a evening routine yeah, try not to work too late, but uh, I do tend to most nights uh, would just, you know, after dinner, kids kids are sorted, they're teenagers now, they don't really need us any longer. So <laughs> a few little drop-offs and pick up some uh, dancing and that's about it. And then, uh, yeah, try to sort of get away from the computer about 8.30, maybe watch something on Netflix with my wife. We like documentaries and try to pick a series that we're going to watch together and then tend to uh, start getting a bit tired and uh, thinking about sleep around uh, 10 o'clock. And uh, read a book that doesn't last very long, maybe it's maybe 10 pages or so and pretty much snoring by 10.30. Love it, love it. Do you have a most embarrassing moment? Well, there's probably plenty of those. Uh, my kids will say one every day, I think, but uh, <laughs> probably one I remember as a kid, you know, trying to show off to a uh, a, a young girl in my my local neighbourhood and sort of riding past her uh, house with no hands on your BMX bike and, you know, waved off her and uh, my, my, my tyre turned, hit the gutter and I went headfirst into, into her rose bushes and uh, broke my arm. So that was a pretty embarrassing moment at the time. <laughs> Ouch. There's one way to get someone's attention. I well, she it. did come to my house and sign my car, so there was a positive <laughs> line. <laughs> Always a silver lining. Mm. Um, if you could choose five inspirational people to have dinner with, who would they be? And they can be dead or alive. Uh, say Gandhi. Mm-hmm. Um, Freddie Mercury. Yep. Um, Gary V. Someone yep. more modern and alive. Uh, Richard Branson. Love the marketing, the branding, and I was in the airline industry in my first career. So, yeah, have a real passion for that. Um, my mum, who's, who's passed away. Yep. Um, so I think that's five. Yeah, that's Please fine. throw my Fantastic. wife there if I can. She's always <laughs> <laughs> <buddies>. <laughs> Love it. That's great. Um, do you have a biggest regret? I don't like to say regrets, but uh, probably wouldn't have, probably wish I started this entrepreneurial journey a little bit earlier. That's yep. all. Yeah. Cool. And if you were prime minister for the day, what's one thing that you would change? Wow. Um, well, there's a lot, a lot of talk at the moment about the yes, yes vote, but uh, probably focus on the health industry. I think that's an industry that really needs some help, um, not just for people who can't afford help, but even us who pay health insurance and uh, health funds. I think that's an industry that really needs uh, something to look at and rebuild. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And best piece of advice? Oh, I think I get most advices uh, most days listening to different quotes and people, but probably one as a younger chap, probably through through sport, but then also in business is um, don't think, do. 
Yeah, nice. I love that. I love that. And how can the audience, how can the our wonderful audience get in contact with you? What's the best way? Uh, so we're very active on social. Uh, I produce a piece of content on LinkedIn every day, educational piece. Uh, so LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Facebook, uh, also searchpartyproperty.com.au. Searchpartyproperty.com.au is our website. So lots of lots of information on there that people can sink their teeth into if they want to learn about property investing. Love it. And any final thoughts or comments you'd like to leave us with? Um, no, I think probably if it's around property investing is, again, don't overthink it. Um, do your research. Speak to experts like us. I mean, most experts will give you uh, complimentary discussions and, you know, make sure you really ask them where they're buying, what they're doing, show show some deals and educate yourself and take some responsibility on that. But then don't overthink it. Take action is the key one for us. So good. So good. And that's that's the, from the quote, right? Don't think too much. Just just get in and do. I love that. Yeah, get it done. Love it. Love it. So, Julian, really appreciate your, your time, your expertise, and your wisdom. Check it out, guys. Searchpartyproperty.com.au. Heaps of resources, heaps of information there. Get in contact with Julian. Have a conversation. And, uh, mate, thank you once again. Pleasure. Thanks for your time, James.